Welcome back. So we're going to do a couple things today. Uh, first, we're going to read through this rather insightful, uh, perhaps incisive piece. Uh, and then second, we're going to play some games. So, yeah, while I may or may not understand this word wastage, and uh, the article here is named How I Went from 2000 Fida to 2000 Fida in Just Three Years as an Adult. So this kind of pokes fun at all the other blog articles which explain, oh, just do these five simple tricks and you will immediately make it to 2000 or whatever the goal is. Um, so this is by our resident, uh, our patron of Lee Chess Nitic. And yeah, 16,000 people have viewed this article or rather, it's been viewed 16,000 times, and 1,000 people like it. So, three years ago, he was coming off a career high, taking sole first place in the national championship with a 2200 performance in FIDE. In just three short years, he'd managed not only to maintain his rating at a solid 2000, but also doing so while pouring as many pointless hours into the game as could be mustered. How is this possible? Well, here are the steps one must follow to replicate this progress from 2000 to 2000 in just three years. If you really want to become a great chess player, you have to immerse yourself into the game. Live it, breathe it, eat it. Uh, but it is it does not follow that immersing yourself will make you a really great chess player in the same way that, like, being in a garage doesn't make you a car. So what are the activities that you need to, like, act upon and fill your time with to convince yourself, not others, just yourself, that you are working on your chess? Step one, YouTube videos. Watch as many YouTube videos as you can with the wackiest thumbnails you can find. If someone is holding their head in surprise at a move, this video is probably maximally relevant for your chess improvement and should be clicked on immediately. Yeah, a lot of people will just watch videos that look entertaining and convince themselves that, hey, that was entertaining, I learned something. So, two, Twitch streams, uh, the home of non-content, billions and billions of hours of non-content. You watch a six-hour stream of four Grandmaster games and just stare and wonder at the reams of analysis being produced by your GM commentators and engines. Um, or watch some big-name streamers if you want to predict who's going to blunder a piece last. Because, like, the big-name players will play at these crazy fast time controls. Either way, be sure to do so with a glazed expression on your face. You wouldn't want to tire out your eyes while watching. Three, Discord. Yeah, just participate in Discord. It's a great place to have all sorts of chess-adjacent discussions, really. But also chess discussions. Uh, we could talk about whether Alekhine or Eliakin or Capablanca was better. Or talk about whether somebody's favorite opening is refuted, even though nobody knows the refutation. Or you could just look at cat pictures or discuss like rating graphs or you know there's probably reasons to participate in discord <laughs> oh well here's my opinion on the latest marvel film so yeah these are really things you got to do if you want to convince yourself that you are in doing activity to try to improve take the easy path there are many aspects to any chess player skill one could be weaker in strategy but be a tactical genius but what's the one point we all agree upon? If only our openings were better, we'd each be 300 ELO higher. And the rating system would totally work that way. Uh, it's fortunate we can believe this, because it's so much easier to mindlessly drill opening practice than it actually work on your game. So here's some useful resources to do just that with opening training. So do chessable, or chess tempo opening training, or just borrow from your library or you know build up your own personal library of chess books 
and just never open the books, but stick it under your pillow. And, you know, the more you spend, the more you're going to improve at openings. <laughs> People do this. They really do. Turns out you actually have to, like, not take the easy path if you want to improve. But if your goal is to start at 2,000 and remain at 2,000 in just three years, these are the steps for you. Stay away from anything that might produce a failure. It feels bad to lose. It feels bad to know that despite all the work we've done, there is always more work to do. It feels bad that we will always make mistakes. How can we resolve this? Simple. Never do anything that might produce a failure. If you play serious classical games, you run the risk of becoming very invested in the result. This is problematic because you might lose the game and then you'd be sad or angry. Nobody wants to be sad or angry, so make sure that if you do play any actual chess, you are entirely uninvested in the outcome. The easiest way to do this is by volume, so just cram as many one-minute games as you can. Similarly, if you work on chess exercises from workbooks, you might find that you don't get all the answers correct. This is incredibly frustrating, because you want to demonstrate to yourself that you're already a good player and don't need to improve. Good players always get the answers right. If I don't do any exercises, then it's possible I'm living in the universe where I would have gotten the exercise answers correct if I'd actually done them. There's nothing to disprove this, because I'm not going to try to find out, so I could just rest easy. And there you have it. Do you think this would be difficult? Not at all. So yeah, just start at 2000, follow these steps, and you could stay at 2000. And yeah. I'm happy to tell you that this is the easiest thing to do in the world, just drift, follow these steps, many of you are well on your way. And maybe in a few years' time, we can meet on the battlefield, and it'll look remarkably similar to that time we met five years earlier. Until then. So yeah, thanks to Nitek for summing up really what needed to be said. I don't know how many other people are going to produce parody articles on similar subjects. But goodness, um, yeah, the notion of getting your advice from entertainment and then, like, thinking that that's, like, serious coaching advice, I mean, sometimes it might be helpful, but if you're actually, like, trying to improve, you know, like, join a chess club, um, meet a coach, I don't know, do something that isn't the easy path, challenge yourself a little bit. Figure out what it is that you can do better, and, you know, either you can find that you can do better, or you find that there's something that takes your interest more than the game. Like, maybe you're more interested in the history of the game, and you want to start documenting it. Or maybe you find that you enjoy artwork or software or something else. So, I mean, even if you find that, like, this game's actually difficult, and it's something, like, Okay, you enjoy taking the easy path and you don't care about improvement, that's fine. Don't delude yourself into thinking you're actually trying to improve. Don't spend, like, money on 150 books if you don't open the first five, really. Unless you just like book collecting. Some people like that, but it's not the same thing as improving at the game. So, yeah, this is Nitek's story. In some ways, this is kind of my own story, because I've been at uh, under 2000 for about a decade, just kind of sitting there. I've had some performances and tournaments that have been over this number, but do I feel super motivated to, like, elevate my rating? Well, kind of yes and no. Um, it is on my bucket list. Like, I have purchased some books, not 150, more like 10, but uh, I found, like, software development to be more engaging than me trying to improve my chess rating. So, um, that caught my interest much more. Just collaborating with folks, developing high-quality software, uh, learning the game of Shogi caught my interest, so... Like, yeah, eventually I'll circle back to this and cross whatever number. It'll happen, but um, do I, like, watch videos based on them being clickbaity? 
based on them having some crazy fun expression on their face? No, not really. Do I get addicted to the chess category? Well, until the point where I realized it was addictive, and then I realized, you know, you know this is probably not great for me. So, uh, I don't actually follow the category. So, like, everything that I follow in terms of chess on Twitch is just, like, word of mouth kind of stuff. I don't actually look at who's got 1,000 viewers and think, ooh, this person has 1,000 viewers, I better go watch them. I don't do that. If they stream with their lights off in their room, I think, is this the sort of person that I want to watch? Do I want to be the sort of person who lives in a room watching a screen with the lights off? No, not really. If they do some kind of like 6-hour, 12-hour stream all the time, I think to myself, gosh, is that the sort of life I want to live? Just sitting at the computer doing the same thing for many, many hours at a time? Well, it depends whether they do that regularly. It's a good business model for them to do that sort of thing, but I figure if folks can't, like, I don't know, have some degree of something and, like, vary what they're doing from the first three hours, the next three hours, the next three hours, if they're just constantly churning the same stuff, it's not really how I want to experience the game, so I don't follow it that way, but some people really enjoy it, but to each their own. If your goal is to improve, it probably requires some experimentation and not always taking the easy path. Um, and it's not necessarily true that like paying more makes you um, better at a thing. You'll feel more invested in something if you're paying for it, but that doesn't mean that like paying necessarily offers you value out of that proposition. And yeah, if you never try things that could produce failures, that's really not a good way to experiment either. So uh, yeah, this is how you can make it from 2000 Fide to 2000 Fide in just three years. And so yeah, if anybody else makes it to 2000, let us know if you can replicate this experience. Um, I wish you the best of luck. Uh, you know, there's more to chess than just a number. It's possible you might meet a lot of friends, you might have a fun community, you might enjoy cat pictures or other stuff. And that's fine. You might find that more engaging from time to time than just trying to improve this one number. I don't know. Um... I haven't played in tournaments for several years now. Maybe sometime I'll, I'll go back and play tournaments again. I've just found that it's tremendously exhausting to do this. And uh, once you ascend the rating ladder high enough, you know, you'll probably find the same. You'll find that, okay, I can't just do the same things to improve that I've done the past five years. I have to try something new and different in order to keep improving on your improvement. And everybody else also is getting access to better information and tools, so it's just really a, a dollar auction uh, where uh, people have a sunk cost fallacy and figure, you know, I've come this far, I have to invest more and try harder, and I absolutely must improve. And... Um, the tools and data and games have never been more available than they are today, so there's lots of opportunity for everyone to improve, not just you. And the openings you've played a decade ago might be refuted by now, so yeah, you have to be aware of that. Um, so it's true with over-the-board tournament play, I've played like a ridiculous number of openings. I've played them all pretty badly but it was a fun experience for the time, just trying different opening after different opening. Opponents would have no idea what to predict, nor would I, because I would just play like whatever felt like fun to play. Um, turns out that you really can't make it over 2,000 consistently that way. So, you know, once you start getting around this number, once you're like, I don't know, 1850 or something, 
then start thinking about openings a little bit more seriously. Maybe read the Duretsky books. I don't know. But yeah, thank you to Nitik for this inspiring and hilarious article about just how to enjoy the mediocrity of the amateur world. Because if you can't enjoy it, like, what can you enjoy? I mean, potentially you could enjoy trying to ascend the rating ladder and get a title. But that is just, it's a massive time sink and a massive, like, need to be very self-critical, at least of your chess play. Um, maybe not of your psychology or other things, but your chess, you have to very carefully examine this. Or you just have to be crazy good at calculating everything. And some folks are just phenomenally good at calculating and have an excellent memory for openings and other ideas. But um, most of us have to work pretty hard at it. So, uh, yeah, this, this sums up kind of like what the internet thinks of chess in some way. The internet... <laughs> It's a very diverse place, and it has many different opinions about the game, but this is one quite popular opinion. Um, just change the numbers a bit. Change, like, the 2000, this 2000, and the 3. Put in something, adult, kid, elderly, whatever. Just change the title to whatever you want the title to be. Change the numbers to whatever you want the numbers to be. And people will more or less follow the same recipe. Um, and spoilers, not everybody can make it into the top 10% of competitive players. So if you're wanting to be in the top 10% of competitive players, you might have to do something different than what everybody else is doing. That's all I'm saying. So, uh, yeah, thanks again to Nitic for this hilarious article. Um... I would have put the image in here, but I didn't see the image license, so hopefully he doesn't sue me over reading his article on stream and injecting my own commentary. But yeah, I'd like to see more articles like this. This is really funny. So thank you again.